All right, welcome back. We'll continue and we will get down to business now. Uh, and we'll do so by writing out the weak form. <clears throat> the weak form for linearized elasticity. Right, so. I'm going to take the approach we uh, adopted when we worked with uh, linear elliptic PDs with scalar variables in 3D, okay, which is that I'm going to first put down the weak form and then I will demonstrate how we obtain it from the strong form. I won't go back the other way to uh, just avoid just because those, those arguments are uh, identical to what we did in 1D, but they are, you know, they're more subtle and, uh, and so on. Okay, uh, but however, we know how they how they operate and, and, and they hold. Okay, weak form of linearized elasticity. Um, and, and, and from here onward, I'm going to use coordinate notation only, okay? Because um, there are details, as you can see, which become most transparent when we use coordinate notation. Okay, so given the usual data, given UG sub i, T bar i, F i, the constitutive relation sigma i j equals c i j k l um, epsilon k l and the kinematic relation Epsilon uh, KL equals one half partial of UK with respect to XL plus partial of UL with respect to XK. Okay, given all of this, find u i, okay, which uh, belongs to some space S, okay, um, which consists of all u i such that u i equals the Dirichlet boundary data on the corresponding Dirichlet boundary reserved for that particular component, right? Um, of course, what's implied here is I equals 1, 2, 3, okay? Find UI belonging to S in this, of, of this type, such that for all W i belonging to V, which now consists of all functions uh, which satisfy the homogeneous boundary condition on the corresponding Dirichlet boundary, on the corresponding Dirichlet boundary, right? Here too we imply that i equals 1, 2, Okay, okay, so let me read this all over. Given the data U, T bar, UG, T bar, F, and the constitutive relation, the constitutive relation and the kinematic relation, epsilon equals that, those derivatives of U, 
find u belonging to s such that for all w belonging to b the following holds right all right so now let's write out what holds integral over omega w i comma j sigma i j dv equals integral over omega w i f i dv plus now here comes the rub because of the fact that our traction boundary condition needs to be specified individually for each component we need to straight away here have a sum i going from one to number of spatial dimensions and of course we're doing this in three dimensions right of integral over the corresponding traction boundary okay of w i t bar i d s i want to emphasize here that do we imply a sum in that integrand over i think about it look at that last term there is in fact no sum okay the sum is not implied there the sum is explicitly being carried out here but importantly we don't do that over the integrand because why do we not do it over the integrand it's because that domain of integration could be different for each component i okay so we can't quite do it as an implied sum what we need to do instead is compute that product for each value of i w i t bar i integrate it over the corresponding neumann boundary right which could be different for each component right we get a scalar right and then we sum up those scalars right over over the three spatial dimensions or over the spatial dimensions okay so that's important to note okay so let me state here no sum implied for for just that term wi t bar i okay instead we have that explicit sum all right this is our weak form what i will do now is um derive it from the strong form okay and um I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. I'm not going to re. Well, okay. I, maybe I will restate all the data very quickly. Okay. So um, what we what what I'm I'm going to state here first that the strong form implies the weak form, and the weak form also implies the strong form. But like we did for the case of the scalar 3d elliptic linear equations we'll do only the right word implication here right the right word equivalence just just as a demonstration all right and that is the following right once again given u g i t bar i f i um, the constitutive relation sigma i j equals c i j k l epsilon k l the kinematic relation epsilon i epsilon let me write this as epsilon k l equals this okay what we want to do is find ui such that c 
sigma i j comma j plus f i equals zero in omega and boundary conditions u i equals u g i on the relevant Dirichlet boundary and um, sigma i j n j equals t bar i on Okay, so this is our strong form, right? Yet again. All right, we start out from here and now um, we introduce, as we did before, the weighting function, right? So what we start off by saying is now let us consider um, Wi belonging to V which uh, has the usual property, right? Which is that V consists of all Wi such that Wi vanishes on that Dirichlet boundary, okay? What we will do now, and this is something you may recall from uh, our previous repeated developments of the weak form, um, actually think about it. what do we do? How do we proceed now? Right, we multiply that PDE with WI and integrate, okay? So what we do is uh, multiply the PDE by WI and integrate. over our domain omega, right, which is an open domain in R, R3. All right, um, fine. When we do this, here's what we get. We get integral over omega Wi sigma ij comma j dv plus integral over omega W i f i d v equals zero. Okay. Uh, here sums are implied over i. Okay. So I'm not going to state it, which means the sum is implied. Right. Okay. So um, do you recall what comes next? Right. We observe that this um, divergence. Right, we get rid of by uh, invoking integration by parts. Right, and integration by parts, you may recall, is nothing but a combination of um, the product rule of differentiation and Gauss's theorem of divergence. Right, applied to tensors now. Okay, so what we do here is integrate by parts. Right, and we integrate by parts on that term. Okay, and in integrating by parts, remember that this is basically product rule of differentiation plus uh, the divergence theorem. Okay. And the way we do that is the following, right? We observe first that uh, that derivative on sigma can be rewritten if we just consider it to be the following. Integral over omega, a derivative of the whole product okay, minus an integral over omega W i comma j sigma i j 
dv. What I've done here is apply the first of my uh, two uh, techniques here, right? I've applied the product rule here, okay? And of course, along for the ride is uh, W i f i d v integrated over omega. The whole thing is equal to zero. Okay. The next step, we invoke uh, the divergence theorem on the first integral. And in doing so, we observe that since the i index has been contracted out here, some being implied, that um, term in parentheses is essentially a vector, right? A vector with free index j. And we recognize that we have properly here the divergence of that vector, right? That vector for our purposes is something that you may probably write as w dot sigma, okay? So we, we just have the divergence of that vector, right? So now we apply the divergence theorem on um, that term, right? And in doing so, what we get is integral over the boundary, okay, um, W i sigma i j n j d s minus the other terms don't get, uh, don't change. Minus W i comma j sigma i j d v plus integral over omega w i f i d v equals zero. Okay, we have this and um, what we're going to do now is, is, is two things. I'm going to rearrange things a little and the way I'm going to rearrange this is by observing that uh, this term has a negative sign so I'm going to move it to the other side, uh, but I'm going to change my left and right hand sides 